the nightly business report. Good evening. Tonight, President emphasizes the crucial role of the Sri Lankan tea industry in transitioning the country towards an export economy at the Colombo International Tea Convention. A historic day for moviegoers in Sri Lanka has arrived as Scope Cinemas proudly presents its spectacular new IMAX theater at Havelock City Mall. The Colombo Stock Exchange ends the week with an initial gain, followed by a downturn. And OpenAI ventures into a new territory, which is long dominated by Google with the selective launch of Search GPT. A very good evening and thank you for joining us. President Ranil Vikramasinghe emphasized the crucial role of the Sri Lankan tea industry in transitioning the country towards an export economy. President Vikramasinghe made these remarks while addressing the opening ceremony of the Colombo International Tea Convention, which commenced yesterday at the Cinnamon Grand Hotel in Colombo. The two-day joint convention, themed Tea, a Lifestyle and Livelihood, was jointly organized by the Colombo Tea Traders Association and the Sri Lanka Tea Board. He underscored the need for a comprehensive promotion strategy developed in collaboration with both public and private sectors. The president noted that Ceylon Tea is a world-renowned brand and should be further promoted through a new strategic program. Industry experts, leading brands and social organizations from numerous countries, including Kenya, China, India, Japan and the United Kingdom, including the Gulf countries and the United States, gathered at the convention representing the entire global tea value chain from crop to cup. Our transformation from a feudal economy to a modern economy in the 19th and the 20th century was driven by a plantation industry, by tea. A lot of modernization methods may not have come into being if there was no tea industry. And certainly, Ella would not have been a tourist attraction without the tea industry coming into being. So therefore, now you are at the next stage. And let's be realistic. We are a country which broke up a capital formation which came out of land plantations for about 30-40 years. Now we are trying to recapture that and to bring plantations up to play a role in the future. So let me first tell you the first step. I don't think we need plantations. We need a thriving agro-business, both of smallholders and large um, management companies who will look at the highest earnings possible. So that is the beginning. <laughs> Meanwhile, President Ranil Vikramasinghe expressed his gratitude to all political parties in Parliament for supporting the adoption of the Economic Transformation Bill and urged them to unite in advancing this initiative. He highlighted that the bill includes the necessary governance and institutional framework for developing an export-centred digital and green economy in the country. The President made these remarks during a ceremony at Rambukkana Parakram Mahavidyale where he participated in providing smart classroom equipment for schools and peer events under the Digital Economy Strategy 2030 program implemented jointly by the Ministers of Education and Technology. According to President Vikram Singh's plan to expand digitization across the country, the Minister of Technology has initiated the Digital Economy Strategy 2030 focusing on six key pillars which are infrastructure connectivity and access, skills, literacy, industry and employment, cyber security, security and privacy, digital finance services, e-governance, industry sectors and digitization. Shalaka Gajabahu, the chairman of the Sri Lanka Tourism Promotion Bureau, announced that a proposal to offer free visas to tourists from 67 countries is set to be presented to the cabinet next week. He added that the president has appointed a committee for this purpose. As per information, there was a crisis with companies handling the visa process previously, but now they have developed a proposal to offer free visa to 67 countries. Many competitive markets like Thailand, Indonesia and Malaysia provide free visas to around 80 to 90 countries. These countries allow visitors a 30-day stay without any issues and most tourists visit within this period. Currently, Sri Lanka offers free visa to seven countries including India, China, Russia, Japan and Thailand. Mr. Gajabahu stated that they are suggesting extending free visas to 67 countries. He believes this proposal will be submitted to the cabinet next week. If approved, he thinks it will significantly increase the country's tourist numbers. He stated that under the new schedule to further promote Sri Lanka's tourism industry, a new event calendar has been prepared. 
He further mentioned that this event calendar will introduce various activities for tourists according to the different times of the year covering every province in Sri Lanka. This initiative aims to create opportunities throughout the year for all businesses related to the tourism industry in those regions. Meanwhile, joining a press briefing, Somanathna Vidana Patrana, who is the secretary of the Ministry of Tourism and Land, stated that by 15th of July 2024, a record of 1,095,675 foreign tourists have visited Sri Lanka. From January to June 2024, the tourism industry has generated an income of 1,556.64 million US dollars. Also joining this briefing, Mr. Chalaka Gajabahu stated that Sri Lanka's Tourism Promotion Bureau has successfully implemented numerous programs over the past two years. Accordingly, under the Seeing is Believing project, launched by the Public Relations Department, 189 international travellers, bloggers and communicators were brought to the country, securing media coverage worth over a billion rupees for Sri Lanka. He added that the marketing department utilized 15 major travel affairs including the ITB in Germany, WTM in London, ATM in Dubai, IFTM in France and SATTE in India as well as 29 road shows for tourism promotion activities. A report on Sri Lanka's Revenue Administration Management Information System prepared by a ministerial subcommittee has made seven key recommendations, including the use of the National Identity Card for identifying individuals for tax collection purposes. The report on the effective RAMIS system utilization recommended using the National Identity Card exclusively for identifying individuals for tax collection purposes. The subcommittee chaired by the Minister of Power and Energy, Kanchanavijay Sekara, presented the report to President Ranil Wickremesinghe at the President's office recently. The recommendations included simplifying tax collection with a user-friendly portal featuring enhanced UX and streamlined online communication. Soso said that Sri Lanka's domestic banks are in talks with the government to seek repayment of their sovereign bonds in rupees, though there are concerns about the potential impact on the exchange rate from such a move. Out of $12,550 million of sovereign bonds outstanding, about $1,750 million of bonds are held by resident investors, the bulk of which are banks. When dollar asset is repaid in rupees, the banks have a negative foreign exchange position against the deposit liabilities called the net open position which has to be covered by purchasing dollars from the market. By exchanging a rupee security, banks are hoping to reduce or avoid a haircut on the ISB holdings as they did in the case of Sri Lanka development bonds. When Sri Lanka development bonds were repaid in rupees without a haircut, the central bank also provided some dollars in August 2023. Let's take a short commercial break. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. The negative trend at the Colombo Stock Exchange continued for a second consecutive day with no recovery observed in either of the indices. Both the All Share Price Index and the S&P SL20 recorded losses by the close of today's trading session, reflecting a prevailing negative sentiment. This week has been marked by a fluctuating performance with several days of gains followed by consistent losses. To gain insight into today's market performance and analyze the behavior of the Stock Exchange throughout the week, we now turn to Netli Fernando from First Capital Holdings. Thank you. The market experienced another day of losses, closing on the red, continuing the negative sentiment from the previous session. The index closed at 11,633, down by 7 points during the day. The investors displayed a lackluster sentiment recording low trades due to the uncertainty surrounding the political uncertainty in the country despite the announcement by the election commission confirming the scheduled date for the presidential election which is scheduled for the 21st of September 2024. Selected banking sector counters and blue chip companies contributed favorably, whilst Commercial Bank and JKH uh, shares dragged the index down. The turnover was recorded at LKR 575.5 million, 50% lower than the monthly average of LKR 1.2 billion. 
High net worth investors accounted to over 30% of the turnover, whilst retailers too delivered amidst a lower number of trades recorded. Notably, Maharaja Food Limited initiated trading during the day, closing at 5 rupees and 20 cents, registering a 4% gain. Furthermore, talking about the weekly sentiment, the market displayed a mixed sentiment as it commenced on the negative territory following the uncertainty surrounding the country's external environment and the political landscape, followed by the anticipation regarding the monetary policy review which took place on the 24th July 2024. Towards the midweek, the market bounced back whilst most sectors experienced price gains and higher participation by the high net worth investors. Furthermore, towards the latter part of the week, with the monetary policy rates easing by 25 basis points, the market eased on the green zone but failed to keep up the positive momentum as the market closed the week on the red, closing, uh, losing uh, a sum of 94 points during the week. Foreign investors remained net sellers, registering a net outflow of LKR 101 million during the week. Gold prices rose in Asian trade today but were nursing steep losses through the week as traders remained largely biased towards the dollar before more cues on interest rates in the coming days. Spot gold rose 0.3% to $2,371.23 an ounce, while gold futures expiring in August rose 0.7% to $2,369.90 an ounce. The yellow metal briefly hit record highs in July before a mix of profit-taking and volatility volatility in commodity markets saw prices fall sharply. Spot prices were down 1.2% this week, having initially fallen much further yesterday after stronger than expected second quarter gross domestic product data from the US. Oil prices were little changed today, but on track for a third consecutive weekly decline, pressured by muted demand in China and expectations of a Gaza ceasefire deal that could ease Middle East tensions and accompanying supply concerns. Brent crude futures for September dipped one cent to $82.36 a barrel, while the U.S. West Texas Intermediate crude for September fell six cents to $78.22. The benchmarks have lost about 5% in the past three weeks. Brent is trading marginally lower this week, while WTI is down more than 2%. The Sri Lankan rupee has slightly appreciated against the U.S. dollar today, according to the Central Bank of Sri Lanka. Accordingly, the buying rate of the U.S. dollar has reduced from 298 rupees and 94 cents to 290 rupees and 71 cents, while the selling rate has also dropped from 308 rupees and 24 cents to 307 rupees and 95 cents. Let's now observe the exchange rates of the rupee against the other currencies. A short commercial break now. Let's have a look at the corporate world right after this. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Today is a historic day for moviegoers in Sri Lanka as Scope Cinemas proudly unveils its new IMAX theatre at the Havelock City Mall. The state-of-the-art facility introduces the highly anticipated IMAX with laser technology, promising an unrivaled cinematic experience that will captivate audiences with its stunning visuals and immersive audio. IMAX, a name synonymous with cutting-edge cinema technology, is set to revolutionize the local movie-going experience. IMAX with laser is the pinnacle of IMAX technology advancements, 
designed from the ground up to deliver crystal clear, lifelike images and precision audio that transports viewers into the heart of the action. This technology is characterized by the groundbreaking 4K laser projection system featuring a new optical engine and custom designed lenses. The result is bright images with increased resolution, deeper contrast, and the widest range of colors available to filmmakers, ensuring that every scene bursts with the vivid detail and realism. Scope Cinemas has been a reputation for pushing the boundaries of what a cinema experience can be. Since its rebranding in 2017, the company has introduced numerous innovations to enhance the convenience and comfort of its patrons. According with the launch of IMAX Theatre at Scope Cinemas Multiplex in Havelock City, marks the beginning of a new era in Sri Lankan cinema. Moviegoers will now enjoy lifelike cinema experiences with the highest quality visuals and sound that the industry has to offer so far. Authentic Brands Group, a global brand development, marketing and entertainment platform, today announced a long-term partnership with Focus Brands, the brand licensing division of Heller Apparel Holdings PLC for Reebok. Through the partnership, Focus Brands will design, manufacture and distribute Reebok branded outwear products across the UK and Europe. Focus Brands will serve as Reebok's partner in the UK and Europe for its outwear category, which covers a wide range of products for men, women and kids including outdoor jackets, soft shells, bonded fleeces and padded jackets. The products will be sold across specialty retailers, department stores and e-commerce platforms in the region. The partnership marks the expansion of Focus Brands' existing strategic partnership with authentic brands as well as the first major milestone of the Haler Group since its acquisition of Focus Brands in January 2024. The new licensing agreement with Reebok is a further step forward in the group's strategy to grow Focus Brands into a world-leading brand management company supported by the Heller Group's agile manufacturing solutions and sustainable apparel solutions. Focus Brands CEO Ray Evans said that their team has been working closely with Authentic Brands Group for the past three years as the brand licensing partner for Nautica in the UK and Europe. Nations Trust Bank has renewed its partnership with the Wildlife and Nature Protection Society of Sri Lanka, continuing the bank's contribution to WNPs and its environmental and awareness building initiatives. Environmental and biodiversity conservation is one of Nation Trust Bank's key CSR initiatives. WNPS continues to be one of the bank's closest partners in offering its contribution to environmental conservation and building awareness. One of the main initiatives supported by the bank in partnership with WNPS are a series of monthly public lectures by environmental experts on topics ranging from climate action, biodiversity conservation and research and other relevant topics pertaining to environmental sustainability. Olu Water Bottles, one of Sri Lanka's pioneering bottled drinking water manufacturers, recently celebrated its 10th anniversary. This significant event was marked with grandeur as the company invited numerous stakeholders and shareholders to commemorate the occasion. Since its inception in 2014, Olu Tropical Drinking Water has carved a niche in the industry with its distinct product appearance and innovative approach. The brand's commitment to sustainability has been a guiding principle, setting it apart in a competitive market. Each bottle of Olu water originates from the pristine tropical mountainous region of Sri Lanka, encapsulating the environmental richness and uniqueness of the country. This source not only provides high-quality water, but also symbolizes the nature beauty and the heritage of Sri Lanka. Shalindri Malavana, the general manager of Liquid Island, the parent company of Olu water bottles, emphasized the profound significance of this milestone. She expressed the heartfelt gratitude to all stakeholders and entities that have supported the brand throughout its journey. The success of Olu Tropical Water is rooted in the passion and the love that this very community has for it. To every single person that has touched this brand, I thank you. And to you, our dear partners, you have placed your trust in us over these many years. You are truly appreciated and deeply valued. Thank you for joining us this evening. Have a great one. 
Dona and Durham, a distinguished Mediterranean and Turkish restaurant, recently opened its second location in Kalawakibuda. Established in 2018, Dona and Durham has swiftly become a favorite among food enthusiasts, offering a unique fusion of Mediterranean flavors tailored to the local palate. Recognizing the scarcity of gourmet fast food options in Sri Lanka, they entered the food industry to introduce the flavors of their international culinary experiences to the local market. The Talawatagoda location is larger and more vibrant than its predecessor in Timirugasiaya and is set to offer an enhanced dining experience. Let's go in for a short commercial break. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Most Asian stocks rose today as heavyweight technology shares steadied from several sessions of steep declines, although regional indexes were still set for deep weekly losses. Tech-heavy Asian bosses rose today, with South Korea's Kospi adding 0.9%, while Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index rose 0.7%. Japan's Nikkei 225 Index added 0.5%, with all three indexes recovering a small measure of steep losses this week. Among broader Asian markets, Chinese stocks continue to lag their peers, with the Shanghai Shenzhen CSI 300 and Shanghai Composite Indexes both falling slightly and remaining at five-month lows. Australia's ASX 200 rose nearly 1%. We're over at Wall Street now, where the S&P 500 and Nasdaq ended a bumpy session weaker yesterday, falling to regain ground lost in the previous day's tech-triggered sell-off as investors grappled with the likely direction of mega caps. The S&P 500 and Nasdaq ended a bumpy session weaker on Thursday, failing to regain ground lost in the previous day's tech-triggered sell-off. The Dow added two-tenths of a percent, the S&P lost half a percent, and the Nasdaq fell more than nine-tenths of a percent. All three indexes were up for most of the session on the heels of stronger-than-expected second-quarter GDP data. Megacap stocks traded higher mid-afternoon, only to fall later in the day, with meta platforms Microsoft and NVIDIA all ending lower. Lackluster earnings from both Tesla and Alphabet had pummeled Magnificent Seven stocks a day earlier, causing the S&P and Nasdaq to log their worst day since 2022. Alphabet shares dipped again on Thursday, falling 3 percent to the stock's lowest close since May 6. But Tesla rebounded 2 percent. Four more mega-cap tech companies report earnings next week. Among earnings-driven moves, IBM shares jumped more than 4 percent after the tech company beat estimates for second quarter revenue and raised the annual growth forecast for its software business. Shares of American Airlines rose more than 4 percent after the company said it had taken swift action to reset its sales and distribution strategy, which had driven away corporate travelers. Meanwhile, shares of Southwest Airlines climbed 5.5% after saying it would end open seating on its flights. On the flip side, Ford shares plummeted more than 18% after the automaker's second quarter adjusted profit missed estimates by a wide margin. OpenAI is venturing into a territory long dominated by Google with the selective launch of Search GPT, an artificial intelligence powered search engine with real time access to information from the Internet. OpenAI is taking on Google with a new search engine. The artificial intelligence pioneer on Thursday announced the launch of Search GPT. It's a prototype AI search engine and is only being tested with a small group of users and publishers. The best features from the search tool will later be incorporated into the ChatGPT chatbot. OpenAI says the product will provide summarized search results with links to source material. It's potentially a big threat to Alphabet-owned Google, which dominates the global search market. In June, it had a market share of over 91%. Alphabet shares closed 3% lower following the news. 
But the move could also put OpenAI on collision course with its own big backer, Microsoft, which operates the Bing search engine. The Windows maker has already adopted OpenAI tech for use by Bing. Meanwhile, Google recently rolled out AI-powered summaries. Another rival is the startup Perplexity, a search-focused chatbot backed by Amazon founder Jeff Bezos and AI chip champion NVIDIA. And that marks the end of the final bulletin of the Nightly Business Report for this week. We will see you again on Monday with more key updates. Until then, I'm Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. Have a great weekend and good night.